told Alex to say vote early, vote often, and he, he didn't. He didn't say it. He didn't say it. That's why he made that announcement, not me or anybody else for that matter. Good morning again. I am not Pastor Lyle. And all God's people said, amen. <laughs> But Pastor Lyle is with us, so I've got to mind my P's and Q's this morning, so it's, uh, it's good to have you back, boss. Good to have you back. Let's pray together before we hear what God has to say to us this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for, uh, God, once again, just a great privilege of being able to be together here this morning, and uh, God, we... We pray, God, uh, these next several moments that uh, as, we, as we look at your word, God, uh, that, uh, that you would indeed speak to us, uh, God, that these words would not be my words, uh, God, that, uh, that, that uh, we wouldn't hear from me this morning, but God, that we'd hear from you. So God, we, uh, we thank you. God, we thank you for your word, and we pray, God, your blessing over our time together. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So two years ago, this week, actually this last week, the, uh, the world stopped. The world stopped spinning there for a little bit. I don't know if you remember that or not. You probably do. Um, I know I do. It was, uh, it was terrible. You know, looking back now, two years later, you know, a lot of, lot of questions with that, right? Did we, did we do the right thing? we have handled it differently you know the the armchair quarterbacks of history for the next uh, you know probably a few centuries will debate that um, you know for us and, and we're not here to figure that out today um, but I, I know as uh, as you do as well looking back on that time uh, it was uh, it was rough at times it was it was very scary it was frustrating it was uncertain you know, for about, uh, for about 10 weeks, and, and I don't remember the exact number, I'm sure Pastor Lyle probably does, but for about 10 weeks, um, as you recall, we, we did not have church in this building. And uh, for about 10 weeks, everybody was, uh, you were holed up at, we, were, we were holed up at home, we were on lockdown. And so for about 10 weeks there, we would, there was about uh, 10 of us or so, Pastor Lyle and I, the worship team, um, that would come in here on, on Sunday mornings and, uh, you know, and, and, and record uh, and, and stream the worship, the worship service. Um, it, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lonely time in this building. Um, spent a lot of time here, you know, during the week, obviously, when, you know, it is not, uh, it is not full, but uh, it's different. It's different in here on a Sunday morning when you are not here. And, uh, and that, was a, that was a challenging time. That was a challenging time for, for us as a, as a, as a church and, and as, a, as a people. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I, need, I need this. I need this gathering of believers. I need this, I need this community. I need, to, I need to be here week in and, and week out um, around God's people. I am I'm not spiritual enough to take, uh, to take a Sunday off. Um, you know, some people might, might think, oh, you know, if you're in church every Sunday, that means you're, you're super spiritual. Honestly, I, I see it the opposite. I, I, need to, I need to be in church. I need to be around God's people. Um, I need my family to be uh, around God's church and, and with God's people. Uh, when we're on vacation, uh, generally, Jennifer and the kids, we will um, we'll still to try, try to attend a church wherever we find ourselves because we, because we, need, to be, we need to be in church. Um, we've actually got a church in Orlando. We've been down there a couple times that we, that we enjoy visiting when we're down there. You know, it's, it, 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 you want to be, we want to be around God's people. It's important. Um, I shudder to think what would happen if we didn't have this support, if we didn't have this community of believers. And I know Pastor Lyle knows what I'm talking about this morning. I know it has been very hard for him to not be with us um, these, last, uh, these last few weeks. And so very glad that he's back with us. It reminds me of when we first got here nine years ago and you took a, a few weeks off then, uh, as you recall, uh, when he had his heart surgery. And uh, so you know, I wanna plan ahead, so probably in about another 10 years, if you guys plan on taking some time off, um, that's fine. I'm good with preaching for a month or two, but uh, maybe instead of uh, some kind of medical thing, maybe you guys could go to California and take a road trip or something like that, maybe take a sabbatical or, or something like that. So that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> As, 
as a church, as believers, we, we, need, to, we need to gather together. So as we think back, as we think back to that, that lockdown, it kind of, you know, two years ago, it kind of feels like we've been playing catch up ever since. You know, maybe as a, maybe as a church, definitely as people, maybe even as a, as a nation. Um, during, uh, during Advent this last year, I, uh, I heard multiple messages, multiple sermons centered around um, this idea, uh, lyrics of the song, O Holy Night, uh, which go, the thrill of hope, the weary world, the weary world rejoices. This weary world in which we find ourselves. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning and you're weary. Maybe that's where you find yourself this morning, worn down, tired, overwhelmed, confused, exhausted, burnt out. Well, weary traveler, this message is for you this morning. And we're going to see if we can find some encouragement along the way as well. So our text this morning is going to be in Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to pick up with verse 6 here in just a moment, if you want to turn there. Or scroll there. We also have it on the screens. So Galatians. Galatians is one of Paul's earliest, if not the earliest, uh, letter that he wrote to the church in Galatia um, early, uh, early on in his, in his ministry. And I, uh, I enjoy Paul's letters. I especially enjoy, and I don't know if this makes me weird or not, but I enjoy the last, um, the last chapter, sometimes even the last handful of verses at the end of um, each one of his letters because it, it's almost like, so, you know, there's, there's typically great, great order and great unity with what Paul is saying and what he's communicating. And then it's almost like he gets to the end and like maybe he got to the end of the page and he's like, oh, I don't have any more parchment handy. There's a bunch of other stuff I want to say. So he just, he starts kind of like shotgunning in like all these like different like, like words of encouragement, words of truth, words of warning. Like he just starts like the last few verses, sometimes the last chapter of each one of his letters. If you, if you, if you read through, you'll notice this. Um, there's usually a ton of stuff that's fit in kind of just right there at the end. Sometimes it can seem almost frenetic. Sometimes it can seem all over the place. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of meat uh, there in those last um, handful of verses. And here in Galatians, it's no different. So we pick up here in verse 6. Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season... We will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. And we praise God for his word this morning, for these truths to us that we're going to spend some time unpacking as we we go through this. So um, we're going to look at this section of verses, verse by verse, Um, seeing what it has to say to us uh, in regards to this encouragement to not, to this overarching theme of not growing weary. So the first first statement, the first truth that I think we can unpack here in this passage comes in in verse 6, which says, Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. So this idea to teach and to be taught. Oh man, are all Pastor Lane's messages about discipleship? Why does this keep happening? Yes, they are, actually. Maybe you're noticing a theme there. Um, because I, I think the Bible is about discipleship, at least as, as, as I read it. Um, in fact, I think, I think effectively that the, the whole purpose of, of Jesus' earthly ministry was 
to make disciples who make disciples who grow the church. Hence, ultimately, what we are doing here today, uh, roughly 2,000 years later. So how does this relate, though, to not, to not growing weary? What's the, what's the takeaway here for us? Well, we see here in this verse a really neat command. Uh, Let the one who is taught share with the one who teaches. Now, what does this, what does this mean, necessarily? Do, do students really have anything to give a teacher other than maybe the occasional apple? Um, I spent a lot of time in college, uh, about 10 years, in fact. I'd still be there if Jennifer would let me. Um, maybe I'll go back someday, I don't know. Um, you know, teachers teach, students learn, right? That's, that's how it works. Um, at least I thought for a long time that was, that was how it worked. Uh, until I had a, a few opportunities um, over the years to, to do some teaching uh, myself. And then I, then I realized the, the, the dirty little secret about teaching is that when you, when you teach, you're still a learner. And, and if you're willing, you can learn a lot, an awful lot, from the students that you teach. So this, this hierarchy, if you will, of, of, of teacher and, and student um, kind of shifted for me a, a little bit after, after that. Those, those who learn can, can definitely be a tremendous blessing to those who they learn from. So we can, we can avoid growing weary if we are, if we are pouring into other people uh, and if we are being poured into as well. That's how this is supposed to work. It happens in tandem. We're poured into and then we pour out into, into others. Notice also that it flows out of the word, God's word, being, being taught and being trained in the faith and training others in the faith. Sharing God's word and sharing in God's word. These things have to happen together. So this is the first takeaway, to teach and be taught. The second, we pick up in verse 7, where scripture says, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, one also will reap. We reap what we sow. This is probably pretty obvious, right? I, uh, I grew up on a farm. My dad planted primarily and exclusively corn and soybeans. So every spring he would plant some fields uh, in beans, some fields in corn. And without fail, I mean every single year, you know, the... The fields that were planted in corn, come harvest time, there was corn there. And then the bean fields, every year in harvest time, there were, there were beans there. That was, that was how it worked. Um, you know, growing up, and, and even still to this day, I think corn and soybeans are kind of boring. You know, I mean, I know it kind of keeps the, you know, agriculture and the economy and all that stuff going, and there's, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, as a kid especially, I always thought it'd be cool, you know, what if we, you know, we went out there to harvest, instead of, you know, the same old boring corn or soybeans. There'd be like a field of like watermelons or something, you know? I really like watermelons. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Because we didn't, we didn't plant watermelons. We're not gonna harvest watermelons unless we plant watermelons. And those would probably clog up the combine and, uh, you know, Jim's not here to explain it to me, but it probably wouldn't be a good, probably wouldn't be a good thing. Um, there, there is a small exception to this rule, though, that I think proves the point. So, so stay with me. Sometimes there would be, in a, in a field, uh, a, a stalk or two of corn that grew in a soybean field. Um, or sometimes a few be soybeans would, would grow in a field of corn. Um, these are called uh, volunteer plants or volunteer sprouts. Uh, they are, they are not, uh, obviously, magical soybeans that, uh, you know, transformed into corn um, underground uh, in the soil and then, you know, became corn stalks. Uh, these, are, these are corn kernels that would lay dormant uh, in the soil from the previous year and then they would grow the following year. You see that the truth of the matter still stands. What is, what is planted is what is harvested. What is sown is is what is reaped. Sometimes there's a delay and sometimes even the past can come back to haunt us, but what is planted ultimately sprouts and, and grows. 
And in regards to the implications for us today of, of, of not growing weary, what, is this, what does this mean? I think, simply put, it means that we, we want to be very careful as to what we sow. God will not bless our, our poor or, or careless or, or sinful decisions. Um, that's the truth of the statement that God is not mocked here in this, in this verse. Uh, God will not turn our folly into faithfulness. Um, now, he can and he desires to, obviously, to redeem us and to redeem our fallen nature, but we, we have to fully hand ourselves over to him to do that. Uh, we have to sow the good seeds that he has given us, which then, as his word tells us, will, will reap a harvest of righteousness. The important takeaways there for us that will help us not grow weary. We continue on in verse 8. For the, for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. This idea of Spirit over flesh. Sowing to the flesh versus sowing to the Spirit. What are we, what are we living for? We, we often grow weary when we're, when we're chasing after the things that are not from God. If we're pursuing our own to our, to our own ends, if we're pursuing selfish things, our own gain, our own pursuits, our own desires, if we're seeking simply to, to gratify the desires of the flesh, we will, be, we will be sorely disappointed and we will come away broken and empty. In the, the previous chapter here in Galatians, in Galatians 5, uh, which follows directly after the list of the fruits of the Spirit, which I'm sure many of us are, are familiar with that passage there, starting in Galatians 5, 22, listing out the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, right after that, in verse 24 of chapter 5, we find um, this statement regarding those who desire to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We're, we're not told here simply to, to brush aside the flesh or to you know, ignore the flesh or to, to put it in a box somewhere or to you know, just put it in the closet and hide it. We're told in the, in the strongest and the, the most forceful language possible. The, the language and verbiage to how they, that refers to how they killed our Lord, to, to crucify it. Do you want to know how to resist growing weary and worn down? Crucify the flesh. The reality here is that we can be we can be doing good things, but if we're doing good things in our, in our own strength, and not in the strength and power of God, not in the strength of the Spirit, we grow weary. We must be drawing from the Spirit and the power and the strength of God every day, every day, to fill us, to cleanse us, to satisfy us. And then we, we do good out of that, out of that abundance. We are... We are empty cups, Scripture says. We are, we are broken vessels apart from God pouring into us his, his Spirit and His truth. Verse 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up do not give up on doing good in due season we will reap if we do not give up Lord haste the day there, there are a great many people today even, even within the church who have who have grown weary and who have given up I think one of the, the greatest tragedies of the, the last few years is that believers didn't rise to the opportunities in front of them to be, 
to be the church. We, we circled the wagons. We, we operated out of fear. We, we got suspicious and paranoid. We focused more on what we were afraid of losing instead of what we stood to gain. Not so much in this life, obviously, but in the life to come. We, we stopped living with an eternal mindset and adopted a worldly mindset to our, to our great downfall and to our great shame. Keep doing good, the apostle Paul urges us. Do not give up. We're, we're playing the long game here, folks. And, and, and I'm not talking about preparing for or saving for you know, retirement 10, 20, 40, 50 years down the, the, the road. I'm, I'm talking about preparing for our eternal dwellings, our eternal home, our, our heavenly home. Every day, we're given a chance and we're given a choice to put another deposit and the down payment for our heavenly homes. Now, I want to be clear. Jesus is the only way to heaven. There are no good deeds that we can do in this, in this life that can get us through those doors. As we spoke earlier, that the flesh must be crucified. It is only by turning control of our lives over to God himself, accepting Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross for our sins, and, and giving our lives fully and completely over to him as Lord that we are saved. As the Apostle Paul states elsewhere, it, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The good that we do is not, not in the flesh. It's of the Spirit. And we cannot, we cannot give up. We must keep going. We must keep allowing Him to do the work in us first and then through us. And finally in verse 10, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So we find here this truth, do good to the people who do good to you. No, that's not right. Uh, do good to the people who can pay you back. No. Uh, do good to the people who deserve it. No. No. Do good to the people who look like you. Do good for the people who vote the same way you do. No. Uh, do good for the people who are the same gender as you. Do good to the people who have as much money as you do. Do good to the people who live in the same neighborhood as you. Do good to the people who are the same age bracket as you. It doesn't, it doesn't say all that, does it? Now, what does it say? It says, do good to everyone. Everyone. Everyone means everyone. This idea you know, that we see elsewhere in Scripture, who is, my, who is my neighbor? Jesus told a story about that, and it's, it's often the person who is, who is most unlike us and is, and is hardest frankly, hardest to love. The, Jesus taps us on the shoulder and, and asks us to do good to that person. But Pastor Lane, what about that, that part there in that verse about the, the household of faith? Don't, don't forget that. Doesn't that mean that I start with the good Christian folks and then if I have any good left over, then I can share it with the world outside of my inner Christian circle? No, that's not actually what it means at all. Uh, but that's a great question as I stand up here and talk to myself. Uh, let me tell you what it means uh, because I think, I think this is very important. I think this idea here in verse 10 is very important and it kind of brings, it brings this truth together for us very well. But, but buckle your seatbelts because it, the truth in this verse is very convicting. Um, at least it was to, to me. What, what God's word is saying here is that, is that this space... This space here, the church, uh, is, a, is a proving ground, if you will, for our good doing. So the, the love that we show to people outside of these walls 
Uh, it starts by the love that we have for each other inside these walls. This is why it's, it's so crucial for us uh, to not be in disunity as a, as a, as a church, uh, to not be in disunity amongst God's people uh, because, it, because it destroys, frankly, it destroys our testimony to those outside of here, if that's the case. Scripture tells us, it, it, in fact, if we're placing our, our sacrifice on the, on the altar and we realize that you know, God convicts us in, in that moment that we're not right with a fellow believer, that, uh, that we need to go and make amends for them. We have to leave our sacrifice to go make amends to them before, before we can even offer up a sacrifice to God. So brothers and sisters, may we search our hearts this morning. If there is, if there is anything between you and another believer, whether, whether here in this place um, or perhaps a believer who attends another church or, or a family member, if there is, if there is something there's something there in between that's, that's disrupting the, the unity. Do not let your head hit the pillow tonight without, without at least attempting one more time to make things right. Do good. Do good, we are commanded. So in, in closing this morning, some reminders to not grow weary some advice, some examples here in Scripture of, of what that can and what that should look like as we, as we seek to love Jesus for the long haul in this, in this weary world that we find ourselves in, in challenging situations and in challenging times, to not grow weary. When have you been the most tired? Was it... Uh, you know, that one year when daylight savings time hit and you lost an hour of sleep and... Every year it sneaks up on us. I, uh, I remember back in college um, having times where um, I was very tired, didn't sleep well uh, in the, the apartment I was living in college. And so I, I always looked forward to the breaks because I would go home. You know, and, and, you, and you go home and uh, I remember very vividly one, one, one holiday break. I went home, got through the doors. I think I made it to the couch. I don't think I fell asleep on the floor. I made it to the couch and, and fell asleep, slept, you know, long enough there, I think about three or four hours until, you know, it was actually time for bed. And then I was able to, you know, drag myself into bed. And I slept for, I think, another 10 or 11 hours after that. Um, that might be the longest I think I've ever slept in one, in one sitting. But uh, I needed rest. I was tired. I was weary. I slept best at home. We are, as believers, only at home when we're with Christ. In his presence, in the, in the center of his will. Allowing him to cleanse us and allowing him to, to fill us. So do not, do not grow weary. Draw strength in Christ it is only through him that we can then do all the good that he desires us to do and that he empowers us to do so if you would join me in, in standing and closing I want to want to pray over us this morning before we wrap things up let's pray together Lord Jesus we we come before you this morning and recognizing, confessing even, God, uh, there's those here this morning that are, that are weary. God, uh, I, I won't ask for a show of hands because, God, uh, sometimes even the strength to lift our hands can be a little too much at times. And yet, God, you know. God, you're, you're here with us. You're not unaware. So, God, this morning, for those here that need God, that need a special outpouring of your grace, of your encouragement, of your hope, of your strength. God, we, we pray that this morning over those folks. God, for those that, uh, God, uh, are, are weary from the journey, God, refresh us, strengthen us, sustain us, empower us. In this world in which we live, 
we will find trouble. But we know your word, your word tells us that we can take heart because you have overcome, because you've overcome and you've made us overcomers as well. So Lord Jesus, strengthen us today. Go with us, encourage us, challenge us, guide us in this week ahead. Empower us as believers to do the work, to do the work that you've called us to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence here this morning, for your word to us. We pray your blessing over the rest of this day and the rest of this week. In Christ's name, in Christ's name, amen. Be blessed and go in peace this morning, not weary, but energized in his spirit, seeking to do good, do the good work that you, that he has called you to do. You are dismissed.